Good day, Mr. N. Why, same to you. So nice to run into you. That echoes my thoughts. And it's a perfect day for a walk. I think I'll be walking home soon. I guess there's nothing better for you than walking. Incidentally, you're looking in very fine fettle these days, I must say. Thank you very much. Not at all. Here, have one of my cigars. Ah, okay. Tell me, what's it like to be your age? Is it true that one has no worries at all? To be precise, one has no frets. Well, it's all the same to me. Fiddle. It makes a big difference, you know. Don't you play the guitar? Don't you play the guitar? Fiddle. It makes a big difference, you know. Well, it's all the same to me. To be precise, one has no frets. Ah, okay. Tell me, what's it like to be your age? Is it true that one has no worries at all? Not at all. Here, have one of my cigars. Thank you very much. Incidentally, you're looking in very fine fettle these days, I must say. Oh, really? I guess there's nothing better for you than walking. And it's a perfect day for a walk. I think I'll be walking home soon. That echoes my thoughts. So nice to run into you. Why, same to you. Good day, Mr. O. This was an adaptation of a dialogue from Gödel Escher Bach, An Eternal Golden Braid by Douglas Hofstetter. The dialogue works forwards as well as backwards, although subtle chains of meaning change when the lines are flipped between the two characters. This dialogue was paired with music that does the same thing. Johann Sebastian Bach's famous Canon Cancrizans, or Crab Canon. The music was originally published as just one uninterrupted line with an unusual catch, an upside down clef and key signature at the very end, which indicates that it should be played both backwards and forwards at the same time. It's kind of like ambigrams, calligraphic images which give different words or the same word depending on your perspective. Two words with two meanings encoded in the same image. It might be tempting to call a crab cannon a sort of musical palindrome, but it isn't really. A palindrome is something that reads forwards the same way that it does backwards, like taco cat. Taco cat. And that's not really what's going on here. Probably a better analogy would be something called a word unit palindrome, where the meanings of the words change when they're reversed, like, Mind your own business, own your mind. Or, Is it crazy how saying sentences backwards creates backwards sentences saying how crazy it is? Like the dialogue from Gödel Escher Bach, there is a fundamental semantic shift when the words are reversed. So too is the case for the music. Now, how would we go about writing a crab cannon? How did Bach put together this musical jigsaw puzzle? Well, it involves writing two melodies at the same time, both forwards and backwards. First, we'll pick a note for melody A, and then we'll harmonize it in melody B. Usually following the convention of first species baroque counterpoint, we'll find a note either a third or a sixth away. These notes are consonant and easiest to make sound good with one another. Next, we'll add the notes we just composed to the hypothetical end of the piece, but flipped, so melodies A and B switch places. We'll continue this process, writing notes from melody A, then harmonizing them in melody B, and then adding them at the end. We'll do this over and over, bit by bit, until we have a crab cannon, a musical piece that is harmonized with its own retrograde. Now here is an interesting philosophical question. How many melodies did we just write? One or two? Melody B is entirely encoded into melody A. We actually don't lose anything by deleting melody B. There is only one melodic line, like Bach wrote for his crab canon. On May 7th, 1747, Bach was invited to the court of Frederick the Great of Prussia. There, the music-loving monarch presented Bach with a very tricky musical theme, known to history as the royal theme, as a challenge, to see if he could improvise a three-voice fugue around it. Bach did so easily, and so Frederick challenged him to improvise a six-voice fugue on the theme. Bach couldn't, so he wrote a collection of canons and fugues known as the musical offering around this royal theme. Bach's Crab Canon is one small part of this incredible tour de force of musical achievement. Now, it's interesting to note that the German music theorist Hugo Riemann thought very little of the technique of Crab Canon and other clever contrapuntal techniques. He would write, We only give these trifles that their names may be understood. They are of no practical use. Perhaps not, okay, but honestly I think it's pretty cool. Imagine writing a whole song or a whole album like this. Instead of hearing subliminal messages or satanic messages when you reverse a recording, imagine you hear harmony instead. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I want to thank my friend Steve from Samurai Guitarist for joining me on this one. And we made a video over my channel. You can check that out by hitting that link up there and you can subscribe to my channel by hitting that button over there. And uh, yeah, thanks so much everybody. Until next time, peace.